All right, now let's move over to Dune 2. <laughs> I watched Dune 2, and it's changed oh, my God. life. <laughs> oh, God. I knew something was coming after that voice change. <laughs> I, I, I will say that I, I'm going to give you my grade right now. It's 10 out of 10. And oh, shit. <laughs> no joke. I don't give perfect grades often. I always like to try to you know make sure it's... It, but I really walked away. It's been a long time since I walked away from a theater and being like, Yo, boo, save my seat. I'll be right back. And I'm going yeah. back this week again to see it again. And I mean, <laughs> when's the last time you wanted to watch a movie twice in theaters? Like, oh, man. Sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's true. Visually, I mean, just groundbreaking. It has that same impact on me that Lord of the Rings did when I watched it when I was younger. Where I was like, oh, my God, these shots are, I mean, it just like blew you away. It's that. The battles yeah. are so freaking epic. And... It's been a while since the movie actually felt that epic. I mean, even in Endgame, like only the last battle of Endgame felt epic. This whole movie is that. Um, and the the feelings post movie, the debates over religion and politics and everything like, like me and Thomas, since watching this movie and doing a review on Challenge Accepted and everything like that, which go check that out, guys. It's a full guys, full hour review for this movie. But we are texting back and forth still today, debating the the religion aspect of this movie because it has a, an interesting message and stuff. It is so phenomenal. I told you before we started, it's the two towers in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. It's the Empire Strikes Back in the Star Wars trilogy. And I would argue that those are both my favorites of those trilogies. Yeah. That's what Dune 2 is. It's, yeah. it's that good. Damn. Damn. I don't know whether to cry or just get these goosebumps. <laughs> just get your Fandango account fired. Uh, that's what you need to do. That's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Um, what, what did it, so there was uh, basically a 10 out of 10, there's nothing missing. Okay. So yeah. what, what was, uh, what would you think about the first one though? And the what do you think? It, the excellent. I would say so. like, if I were to grade the first one, I would say seven and a half, eight out of 10, because it's so okay. much exposition Got it. as you're familiar, you've read the books too, right? So you um, know yeah. that it has so much setting up to it's building in this huge world with a lot of complicated systems and a lot of complicated politics and religion. The exposition's done. Part two, there is very little to no exposi exposition at all. You know who the Benny Jesuits are, you know, you know, Moadib, you know, all that stuff. And you're going right mm -hmm. in. Okay. Okay. And it picks up with like immediately after too, like they're bringing, um, what's his name? Jesse or whatever. They're bringing the dead guy that they killed at the end of number one. They're bringing his body still at number two. So like right after. Okay. Okay. Are these seeing, okay. So I want to know kind of like visually, right? So it yes. left off. Number one ended with like, they saw a writer writing the sand. Sam. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Right? They were writing the worm. Yeah. Um, uh, so how visually is that? Because that is something to kind of like on a huge scale where it could kind of flop if it was yeah the not the best what's nice is the scale is really a big, a big and important thing like during battles scales is really important like the sandworms feel big the ships feel big people feel small and in those scenes where they're riding the worms um there are different size worms and they all feel very oh. big okay. yeah and um i'm not gonna paul i'm not gonna I'm not going to spoil anything for anybody who's watched, who, but you've already read, you know, Paul rides a sandworm and he's very good yeah. at it. Um, and it really feels like a testament when he does. And okay. they do such a close up of, of him actually mounting the worm that you're like much more about like trying to survive this hostile environment more so than actually like mounting something. Mm. But then of course, the grand scale, when you pull that back, you're like, Oh, he's zipping past in the, in the desert. Now he's on it. So they did a good job with it. it I think during okay. the battle, when worms come up again, that's when you're like, Oh shit, that's right. These are gigantic. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Uh, so, so you're saying what's the longest that we've had with the um, amount of dead time? You're, because you're saying basically that's gone because from the first one. So is it, there back to back craziness so or something? What's going on? Like, it's, it's there, right like there's no back. pauses. So, there really isn't because they're they're trying to get back to the rest of the Fremen and Harkonnens are arriving on the planet after the Atreides have been betrayed and, and slaughtered. And so the Harkonnens are looking for uh, surviving Atreides at this point. Like that's, that's where we're at. We're right off of the first one. And... If you've read the books, you know that there's like a two, three year time jump enough for kids to be born time jump. That's not the case in this movie. There's a couple months time jump, but no kids born stuff. So okay. just if, you, if you're expecting for kids to be around, if you read the books, those kids aren't there, but they're very much still play a part, like especially one okay. of them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, damn, man. It's crazy to 
to to build off the well, it's not crazy to build the first one because there's a lot of storytelling, right? In the first one to yeah. get your get the um, frame up for the house. Um but uh, what I mean was like dead time, like you don't feel like you're there's no stalling in this movie because this is a three hour movie. Yeah. The right? slow part so, to this movie, because of course there has to be I will say by the way, three yeah. hour movie. I, did, I was like, oh shit, it's already been three hours. That yeah. is a pretty good feeling. I'm not going to lie. For that sure. adds okay. a bit. But I, the slow parts of this movie, they do exist, but they're filled with a love story between Paul and Chani, which that's Zendaya. I ain't looking away from. <laughs> <laughs> they're yeah. also filled with learning about um, Fade Rotha, the bad guy who's played by Elvis uh, in this movie. Oh, and yeah, then yeah. and then learning more about the religion and and how important it is in the story and, and stuff like that. Um it's a thinker, though, guys. When you leave this movie, you, if if for a lot of people are conflicted. Thomas, for example, is very conflicted, and we were talking about that, and I was like, that's part of the reason I like this the most. I've seen enough Marvel movies where I walk away, I'm like, yeah, Ant Man beat Kang. Okay, gotcha. This one, yeah, it's like, yeah. damn, was that the right move? Oh man, what do you think they're trying to say with this? Like, ah, that's not good. And it's yeah, like, yeah, that's yeah. that's what it felt like when you left Empire Strikes Back back in seventy eight or nine or whatever it was that's what it feels like after two towers you're like man helms deep was crazy but that's not even the real battle <laughs> you know yeah, yeah. so it's it, that's the feeling that you walk away with this movie okay so reading reading uh some of these books uh florence pew uh yeah pew am i saying her name yep. right mm-hmm. uh how much is she in it because i know she's going to be a huge part in oh Okay. In, in the Messiah. So there's a three third movie coming out. Denis, the director, yes. announced that. She okay. will be a yeah. bigger character in that. Yeah. Uh, she's very much uh, kind of playing her character, really, from the first one, where she's almost giving a narrative aspect of it. She's talking to her father a lot, who's the emperor. Um, yeah, but she's she's just Princess Erlon with opinions. And yeah, she'll she'll you can tell she's gonna be a bigger part in the third one. Yeah. Same with if you guys are looking at the casting and you're like, where's Anna, J- uh, Anna Taylor Joy come in? She's barely in this movie. She'll be a much bigger character in the next one. Okay, because Florence Pugh's, oh man, I don't want to say it because I don't want to spoil it, is, uh, okay, I'm not, I'm, we'll just talk She's off Princess screen. Erlon, and yes, she will do what she does in the end of that book, the first book. So the second okay. book, yeah. She is, okay, okay. Because yeah, I wasn't expecting to see her in the second one. So when I saw her, uh, well, when I saw Florence, and it was casted as I kicked her. I was like, oh, shit, I wasn't expecting that until the next movie, which that's where that second book's supposed to take off. So Right. Uh, but at the kinda, end I'm of the interested. first one, there's a discussion between Paul and the Emperor, which the daughter has to be there for that comment. So they're yeah. kind of setting it up to where that means more. Got it. And okay. it is uh, Chani, speaking of that decision, Chani and mm-hmm. Lady Jessica, who I think are relegated a lot in the books. It's mostly about Paul. Their characters are elevated a lot more in the movie and given much more prominent roles which makes Paul's decision at the end and the fact that the religion is kind of controlling the Fremen a lot more impactful because of Lady Jessica and Chani. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, standout uh, actors. Well, we got, you got uh, Jason Momo's back, right? From the dead? No. It's not really a spoiler, right? He's not? He's not back from the dead. I thought he was going to be, but I guess that's going to be a third book thing. <laughs> yeah. What? They put him on the cover of this poster, didn't they? No, Gurney's back. Gurney's back. So... Thanos is back. Josh Brolin is back. Yeah. But he didn't die. I could have sworn I thought, ju- I thought I, Jason Momoa was Dude, I was so poster. confused by that too. And then even when I was reviewing it later, I'm like, I could have sworn Duncan Idaho makes a return. It's not this one. It's the one he makes That's a that Mandela effect. Boiler I was like, one. no. I know. No. I thought so there. too, bro. Okay, okay. <laughs> That's the whole cloning thing that comes in the next <laughs> thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. How was uh, Batista's in this, right? Batista? Oh, man. It's a trip because he feels like a bitch in this movie. Oh. And I know, dude. I love David. I've realized now that like some of my favorite actors are just wrestlers. I just need to just yeah. accept that. Yeah, the Rock, okay. sure, but also Dave Bautista, John Cena. I'll watch anything with John Cena. In it. Oh my god, he cracks me up on these funny ones. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So so yeah, uh, Bautista did in the first movie. He felt like a relentless beast. In this one, he feels like he's getting bitched out by Elvis. Um, Fade okay. Rotha feels like a badass. And when you first see the like first trailer for him, that particular scene they filmed in um, infrared, so it's all black and white, and it's really weird feeling. He is not that stark black and white when you see him regularly, um, but he does actually feel like a threat. And that's interesting. I didn't expect that out of him. He actually does. Feel, okay. He feels okay. like a threat to even the Baron. So okay. that's cool. Okay. Mm, okay. Uh, standout performances. Who was uh, maybe something that was unex- or someone that was unexpectedly to you did well. Chani really feels like she fell in love with with um, 
uh, Paul okay. and feels betrayed when she's supposed to feel betrayed. I was surprised by Paul. Uh, Timothy Chalamet, okay. in the first movie I thought wasn't quite nailing the Atreides thing, uh, the Paul Atreides vibe. But in the second one, I think he's nailing it more because there's very much that reluctancy to follow the prophecy. I think he okay. does a good job of foretelling you that a lot. Like, okay. don't make me go south. Don't make me go drink. The, da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I think that's carrying through on Paul. I mean, honestly, every performance is done really well. There's a ton of memes out there right now because Tilgar, um, the leader of the Fremen, is very much like, Paul's our Jesus. He's our Messiah. Mm, and it's like, mm -hmm. it's written. Everything Paul does, I mean, like, trips on a rock, like, just like in the Bible. <laughs> you know, it's a lot of that kind of stuff. <laughs> and so there's so many memes where it's like, Paul figures out how to write boobies on a calculator. Moadib, <laughs> you know, it's so much stuff like that, that, that actually Javier Bardem is quite funny in the movie. Uh, okay, he's also okay. a freaking badass. So. Okay. Okay. Anyone that was a letdown or everyone was pretty much par and or better. I, I, everybody was really good. Even, okay. even Rebecca Ferguson who played Lady Jessica, which is a character I don't necessarily care for in the books, mm -hmm. um, which I don't think you're supposed to care for in the books actually. And I'm yeah, saying that yeah. a lot. She played a hell of a good manipulator in this. Like she was convincing. Okay. Okay. Good, good. All right, 10 out of 10. Damn, man. Is this movie of the year already? It is right now my movie of the year, for no. sure. Yeah. I can't think of, I mean, like, maybe the, everything everywhere all at once was shockingly good enough for me right now to be, like, the yeah, last that movie was... that was that good. But, like, even okay. Oppenheimer, I was, like, I expected that out of Oppenheimer. I was not that, like, it didn't blow me away as much as this did. Barbie was good, but it's not like this. That's yeah, how, yeah. you know, it's hard to kind of convey a movie that hit me this hard. Damn, man. So this one, we were your reigning. I don't think, but the way you're talking about it, I don't think there's another movie in the future that's going to be better than that for this year, at least. I will say it's one of those movies that it requires theater watching, requires you go into like XD viewing so Ooh. that it has the better audio because we went, me and Jonathan went and watched it in XD. We actually waited a little bit later to watch it in XD and our seats were shaking whenever there was an explosion going on and I'll, there's a lot of those. Yeah. So yeah. it was very much like, oh my God. And I was even like, dude, I'm so happy we did this. Mm -hmm. We watched, waited for XD because you could feel it in the room. The battles... Okay are as grand and i hate to use the word epic so much but remember how epic was used a lot back in the day when grant when uh, lord of the rings was coming out it was mm -hmm. like oh it's getting overused it's back baby this was as <laughs> epic as i could imagine the movie being i hate yeah, to be so fawning crazy. over it i have not seen a person talk shit about this movie yet and i'm not one of them damn that's crazy that's crazy i was not expecting it to be that you you fall in love with it that much damn yeah, I'm, I'm going again probably tomorrow, actually. Tomorrow morning is matinee oh, day, so I'll probably yeah. watch it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like six bucks to go to the theaters on a Tuesday morning, so I'm like, yeah, right, yeah, I'll yeah watch nice, it. nice, 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 nice. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm glad you had that experience. I, eventually, I will. Eventually okay, I will. let me know when you go, because I want to hear what your thoughts are on it. Yeah, and, for sure. and I know that me talking it up is going to make it a little worse for you, but I still think it's worth it. Uh, you know, yeah, those expectations are extremely high now, so. <laughs> well, that's how it is, right? It's always, yeah. it's always, I remember like when Spider-Man uh, Across the F Spider-Verse 2 came out, and I'm like, damn, I did not care uh, for that. And everybody else loves this movie. And I was like, it doesn't help that I went and think yeah. everybody else loved it, so. Yeah, well, yeah, same, yeah. Awesome, yeah. awesome.